Hey sketchy friends, so in this video I want to um, have a go at <laughs> doing a minimalist style sketch. If you saw my last video I kind of talked through a few different urban sketches who have a really awesome minimalist style and it's just something I'm really inspired by um, at this particular minute. <laughs> so I thought let me let me try out a demo here and kind of point out the things that I'm deciding to draw and not draw and paint and not paint. And maybe it will help you with a few light bulb moments if this is a particular style that you're interested in. Just knowing how to maybe even approach or think about it will help. Obviously, this is not an urban sketch itself. Urban sketching is in the title of this video because that is what I'm gonna relate this demonstration back to if I were outside urban sketching. Um, but I just wanna make it clear this is drawing from a photograph, so it's not urban sketching in and of itself, this particular demo. I really wish we had old pubs like this around here so that I could draw this on location, that would be amazing. But at our last Urban Sketches Johannesburg meeting, we did go to an amazing venue called Shepston Gardens, and I did try out a minimalist sketch there, and I was quite happy with how it turned out. And I think it's a good start. Left lots of white space, tried to keep things simple, and because it was a shorter sketch, I also got to sketch a second sketch, which as you can see on the screen, is definitely not minimalist. <laughs> so this is not a style I'm gonna be doing every time I go at Urban Sketching. For instance, this was the urban sketch I did just two days ago. So again, definitely not minimalist. Um, but I just, I think it's a really fun style to play around with and I hope it's something you guys are interested in. And if you wanna have a go at it too, then watching this demo um, may help you figure out how to go about it too. So I am using an etcher block here. Uh, it came with the beginner's set that I got, which was, I think it's the beginner's ink and watercolor sketching set. I think it's the only one they've got available. But anyway, within that set, it came with this watercolor block, which is A5 sized and is 300 GSM and it's 50% cotton paper. And I've, it's just been on the shelf for ages. So I thought, let me try this sketch on this particular block. And I really love this block. I really love, actually love the 50% cotton paper. I've never tried it before, but yeah, I really enjoyed sketching on this. So I don't know if they sell them separately or if it just comes in the set, but either way, very nice paper. This is quite a tricky reference photo, but one that I thought was super dynamic. And even though I was flicking through various different photos on Pinterest, by the way, I have a sketching reference board over there, which you can go and check out if you're looking for a curated collection of uh, <laughs> photographs to sketch from, all different categories as well. So I just kept coming back to this photo though, and I was like, I just couldn't move off of it. So I always take that as a bit of a sign really that I do want to draw it. And I was like, oh God, this is gonna be really, really tricky because it's quite a quite a wild perspective going on in this one. But yeah, I thought, well, you know, let's, let's just go for it and try it in this minimalist uh, fashion. So this photograph is by a lady in London. She always has great photos of L London pubs especially. So um, yeah, she can find a lot of photos on Pinterest by her, but by accident, I think I have quite a lot of them saved to my sketching reference board. So I've just got a pencil. This is a 2B pencil, but it really doesn't matter whatever you've got lying around. And I'm just trying to get some of the shapes on the page and I'm probably drawing a bit more in pencil than maybe I would normally do, but it's just because it's quite tricky, the perspective. And then also the lettering as well. I always like to try and get that drawn in, even if it's just in my normal handwriting, just so I can make sure that it can fit in. And then when I go in with pen, I can like, uh, make it look more like what's in the photo. It's never gonna be exactly right, especially when you're at an extreme angle like this, but I'll make it look a bit more Irishy. It looks Irish to me. I don't know where this pub is actually. I didn't <laughs> I didn't go that far down the rabbit hole. I just sort of saw the picture and I was like, oh, that's cool. I wanna draw that. Here I'm using a 0.1 fine liner, just a uni pin, waterproof ink in it, of course, because I am gonna go over some of this with watercolor paint. So basically my decisions on this, and you can kind of see it with pencil, is that no big revelation here. I'm just gonna focus completely on the front part of the pub, i.e. the front door and then everything above it. Because A, I mean, that's the, the photographer's done the hard work there because that is the photo, focus of the photograph as well. 
but I'm just going to not draw any of the fussy stuff, any of the heaters and seats and canopies and all that kind of stuff. I'm just not drawing that. And I'm just going to draw the top part of this pub, where the, where the title of the pub is, um, downwards to the door. So those are my editing decisions. Everything else is just going to trail off into white space. And this sketch probably took me an hour by looking at the video footage. I think there was a lot of sitting and thinking involved in it as well. Um, it is quite a complex uh, photograph to sort of like tackle. Uh, subject matter, there's a lot going on. So there's a lot of simplifying in this sketch. Again, that's not a bad thing. It keeps things nice and graphic, not too muddly so you can kind of see what's going on. So the focus is the top part of the pub, that funny chimney, the bit where the writing is, uh, this really cool lantern thing in front, and then downwards to the door. And you'll notice I'm trying to keep my lines quite crisp. They're not hairy, they're not kind of sketchy. I'm trying to just draw with a bold, confident line, because I think that will really help with this kind of style. And if you saw my video, my last video about minimalist urban sketching, that was definitely one of the tips on the list at the end of the video. My tips on how to achieve this style is bold, confident lines, clarity of line, and then moving on to other bits on the list, things like white space, which is that there is going to be quite a nice amount of white space on here. Uh, composition, focal point, all those kind of things I'm really trying to bear in mind when I'm doing this. But you know, this is an experiment. This is practice. This is helping me figure out how to make certain decisions, artistic decisions about what to edit and what not to edit. And it's actually really fun, you know. So as you're drawing, you know, you're making decisions like, mm, should I include that? Yeah, I think I do need to include that. Do I need to include that? No, I think I can get away with not including that and it will still really work. So those are the kind of questions I'm asking myself when I come across a different feature in this sketch. And the thing in the foreground there is just one of those black kind of uh, bollards, metal bollards. They're in the photo and I just thought it'd be really fun to do quite a big one in the foreground, just to give the sketch a little bit of depth. So it's something in the foreground and then the pub is further back. Also just a, a little sense of humor, I guess, just making a nod to the fact that there is just normal street furniture stuff around this pub and it's not all about the pretty pub. It is about the context as well. So now you can see I am refining the lettering um, style a bit more with the pen. It's just a bit easier to do. I didn't feel the need to go into that much detail with the pencil. I just wanted to put the letters there in pencil to make sure I fit them all in. And now I'm just trying to add in some of the flourishes that give the letters the character that they have. It's definitely not exactly like the photograph, but at least it's it's got a bit of, bit of a fun style about it that's slightly reminiscent of what's in the photograph. And that's absolutely fine by me. So I really love this strategy because it really distills the essence of what you're drawing. And it also provides you a much quicker way to get a sketch done on location. A lot of people are strapped for time, um, especially if you're sketching on a holiday. You know, it is that season in the Northern Hemisphere. Right now I have about six jumpers on because I'm freezing here in South Africa. But for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, it is summer holiday time or it's coming up to. So um, a lot of you will probably be taking a vacation, whether it's at home or overseas. And I should imagine a lot of you do that with uh, friends, family, loved ones, etc. I, I hear from a lot of people it can be a challenge to fit in this kind of hobby whilst you're on holiday and you have lots of people vying for your time and attention. But, um, you know, if you can find strategies to sketch awesome things in an hour or less, I think that it really is a win. So um, I really do think this is a great kind of strategy to, to mull over and have a think about, practice from photographs as well, so that when you are out and you're sketching your travels or whatever, then you've got some, you've got some practice done um, and, it, and it really does help. So yeah, I think if you can do something cool in an hour or less, then I think most, most loved ones can, can put up with that. So. I think if you can keep them for distracted for, uh, for an hour then, and you can get your sketching done, then that's all good. 
I also think this style is just really cool. I just really love it. It's like that confidence to not draw everything and still know that you can illustrate the scene, basically. So I just think, yeah, it, there's a lot of confidence with this style and um, I just think it looks really slick. So it's becoming more apparent now that I'm putting the watercolour on that I am only concentrating on certain areas of the pub and that I've pretty much ignored everything on the ground level aside from the front door of the pub. You know, it is looking a bit sparse at the moment, but I think that's where the confidence comes is to be like, no, no, it's that's fine. It's good. Like you can keep it like that. That's absolutely fine. But I do do something to it in a minute, which actually wasn't even my uh, my idea. It was uh, my husband Duncan's idea. He's like, oh, why don't you do this? And I was like, you're a genius. So I have to credit him with that because that wasn't my idea. I'll point it out in a minute. Uh, this is what I love about the cotton paper, even though this is 50% cotton and not 100% cotton, is just the way the watercolour uh, goes down on the page and also blends with each other. So I really love how the Indian gold and the burnt sienna mix together on the front door in the arched window. And it really makes it look like there's a warm light going on inside. And you're like, yeah, I want to go in that pub. You know, it looks very warm and inviting. Just the way watercolour behaves on cotton paper is just very different and very satisfying. So um, if cotton paper isn't something you've tried out yet, then I do recommend just get like a little small sample pack or something, or you can just buy a few sheets. You don't have to go crazy and buy a really expensive block of cotton paper or a sketch pad or anything. You can just buy a few loose sheets and just try it out that way. So I was trying to use a big brush for a lot of the sketch, but uh, for the finer details, I do move to this Rosemary & Co dagger brush, which is really awesome. And it's like my favorite paintbrush. And they've started stocking it in our uh, art shop in South Africa now as well, which is awesome. So um, thank you, Art Savings Club. You always stock awesome stuff. And they didn't pay me to say that, by the way. I just uh, really like their, their shop and their ethos. So big shout out to Art Savings Club. Oh, whilst we're on like promotion stuff, the book cover of my book, uh, the front cover has been officially revealed. It is absolutely 100% confirmed and I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, I think you guys will agree. It's like really cool. Um, the design team at the publishing company have just done an amazing job laying this book out. I have seen the whole thing now, albeit digitally, and it just looks really fun, like really, really fun. You can pre-order the book from Amazon or from your favourite book retailer. I've got a whole list of them on my website, which I'll leave the link in the description below for um, information about pre-ordering and you can go check it out. Oh, this is, that was Duncan's idea, the purple. Not the purple, but the making the delineating, that's my word, delineating the bottom edge of that right hand side of the pub. Uh, he was like, is there any way you can put the pavement in? And I was like, uh, what if I do this? And he was like, yeah, that looks all right. <laughs> so uh, thanks, Duncan, for that suggestion, because I do actually think it provides the grounding, like quite literally, of this sketch. So that was a really great idea. Oh, and here I am using one of my new fountain pens. I bought three fountain pens for under uh, $15 US each um, from a shop here called Right Gear. Uh, rightgear.co.za. I'm doing a lot of promotion today, aren't I? But this is out of the three of them. So they're each under $15, even maybe even $12. I went for like super affordable ones. This one is awesome. This is a Jin Hao 159. It's quite weighty. It's quite thick. And it, like the ink flow is just beautiful. The line weight is quite thick on it, even though I ordered the fine. But it's it's great because I can actually come back in at the end of sketches and fatten up lines with it, and it just works like a dream. One of the other ones I bought was a platinum preppy fountain pen, which was like 99 rand, which is about five British pounds, seven US dollars, something like that. And uh, my last urban sketch, I just did the whole thing with that pen, and it was great. It is very fine, very nice. And then the other one I bought was a platinum desk pen, which I am still uh, yet to really put through its paces. But anyway, guys, enough waffle from me. This is the minimalist sketch. I'm very happy with it. I actually think it looks really cool. I think the crazy perspective actually lends it lots of character. I'm happy about my decisions of what to have drawn and what not to have drawn. I think I got the characteristic parts of the pub. 
So I didn't go too wild with it. I just tried to use only a few colors. I tried to make sure to get some shadow areas in because that's what's gonna make it look more 3D and just a few sort of thicker lines here and there. But that is how I would approach a minimalist version of this photograph. So I really hope that has helped you guys and I hope it's inspired you to give this a go. Um, the reference photo is linked in the description below as well. So if you want to have a go at this exact sketch, then you can do so. Hope you've enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next video.